What's up again there guys, Brian Hoody 3 Tops Gamer, and I have a pretty awesome tier list style ranking video to share with you guys today. Now as I was, you know, just sitting here just trying to come up with multiple ideas, and in fact even getting some ideas from all of you guys, as I looked back at a lot of my tier list and worst style ranking videos, I realized, you know what? I've never actually done a tier list style ranking of all of the current Batman games. So, heck, that's what we're going to do. Now, I actually happen to find this pretty awesome uh, Batman um, tier list video, which, tier list uh, uh, that I found online that you'll, you'll see in a few moments. But, uh, yeah, that's what we'll be doing for this particular video. So, if you do happen to enjoy this video by the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to track me in all my future videos. And remember, if you guys have any ideas for future videos, including top 10 ranked videos or tier list style videos, just discussion videos in general, please let me know in the comments down below. And I will try to get them up as soon as I can. So, before we jump into the list, which you see right about here, uh, as you can see, um, I said this. I'm actually surprised that all of, all the Batman games are here because there's some of these that I I remember from my childhood that uh, yeah I have some pretty fond memories of and uh, some that I actually am uh, pretty shocked that uh, they even still exist. So uh, I have my rankings done in six different categories, ranking from Dark Knight approved, because I'm pretty sure if Batman were real, he would definitely love it, to enjoy, to just okay, to could have been better to send this game to Arkham because no one should ever play it again. And then there's a number of here on that I actually just flat out did not play. So we'll start going from the very, very beginning. And I do believe that the first one going to the NES Batman, I, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's this one. I'm not sure if there was a Batman game. I think all these are kind of similar. And I, I do remember playing the original NES game. I played it on an emulator, uh, but I did really enjoy it. Um, so that's where I would put the old school style first Batman NES game. I, I hope I'm right. Maybe they might be a little bit different, but I hope they're not too different. Uh, the next one that I will go into is Reven Return of the Joker. Um, this one was kind of an updated version of the NES version, but I don't think I liked it nearly as much. I do think that the, one of these, this came out also on the N N NES, but I do not remember enjoying it nearly as much. I thought it was okay for what they were trying to do, but I didn't like it as much. The next one that I absolutely did enjoy was actually the Batman animated show um, Batman game. It was I think it was called like Batman and Robin animated something, but it was it was a nice little beat em up, uh, and I thought it was I had I had a lot of fun. It was based off the Batman animated show that I saw as a kid, and to this day, for a lot of people, it's still their favorite interpretation of the Dark Knight. <sighs> now things are going to get really really rough. Next is Batman Forever, which I would like to say to this day, I still defend this film, and it's actually the reason I'm a Batman fan to this day. It was actually the first Batman, like my introduction to Batman to begin with. But Batman Forever, uh, this game is a mess. It is wacky, but it could have been better. I don't think it's as terrible as some people think it is, but... It, it had a few moments. It had some creative ideas. I liked that it was a beat-em-up. But, yeah, it, it needed a lot of work. Now, this next game, I did not even know existed. And I think I got to show you guys some, some footage here. But this is actually the Batman Forever arcade game. I had no idea that there was even a arcade game. So while I have to put it in didn't play, if you look at just some of the footage right here... This game looks wacky, it looks difficult, but strangely enough, I actually want to find a way to play this game. So if any of you guys in the comment section or anyone watching this can tell me how I can replay this, please let me know because it's crazy and just all over the place as this beat him up looks, this does look like a bit of a crazy improvement over the... Uh, you know, the NES, uh, Super NES Batman Forever game, but uh, yeah. Going back to the list, we now have Batman and Robin on PlayStation. Yeah, we got a Sinister to Arkham. No redeeming qualities. Um, It was a mess. This is the period of time where a lot of games had just a very, very difficult time making the transition from 2D gaming to 3D gaming, and unfortunately for Batman and Robin, it could not do that. Did it, and it avoid this game at all costs. And unfortunately, that fate also has to go to Batman Beyond. Great show. I absolutely love the story following Terry McGinnis. 
um, and his connection to Bruce. The show is absolutely amazing, but the game itself is not very fun on either PlayStation or remember, I do believe this came out on N64 too. I do believe there was a, they're both kind of similar. I think the PlayStation version is a little bit better, but it's it is not a good game in the slightest. Next, we have Batman on Game Boy Color. I actually did not play this one, and I do not remember playing this one. Also, this other Batman game on PlayStation. Next, we have Batman Vengeance. Um, I do believe this could have been better. Not perfect. Um, they tried some things. You know what? I, I I would you know I would put. I mean, would I put that behind forever? They both got problems. Yeah, but I, I have more history of forever. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave Batman Vengeance where it's at. I, it could have been better. Some interesting ideas. I think the story, visuals were fine, but yeah, it's still kind of a bit of a mess. Ooh, this one. Ooh, this is a bad one. Batman Dark Reckoning. Holy hell, this game was an absolute mess. And if you know the story about the development for this game, it's even worse. Um, why they even allowed this game to get released in the condition that it was is an absolute joke. But yeah, this is this was even way worse than Batman and Robin. I, I actually did manage to play this once, and uh, whoo, this was a rough experience. Now, this Batman game up here next, very underrated. No one I know really really talks about it, but this is actually one of the few uh, examples of them actually doing a really solid beat-em-up for Batman in a 3D realm, and that is Batman Rise of Sinsoon. I really enjoyed this one a lot when, it, when I played it on PlayStation 2. It was a blast. You could actually play as four, all four of the primary members of the Batman family, and this took place during the period of the animated show, so you had access to Batman, Nightwing, Tim Drake's Robin, and Batgirl. And I thought the combat actually worked pretty well. I had a lot of fun with this game when I was playing this when I was much younger. So I would absolutely recommend anyone go. You know, you know what? I think I'm gonna go on eBay and try to see if I can get another copy of this and replay this because I, I do remember having a lot of fun with this game. Now we go into the Batman Lego games. I have to admit, I'm not the biggest Lego fan for games, but uh, I did play this one and I, I had fun with it. Um, perhaps not as much fun as other ones, but I, I would still say it was quite enjoyable. Next we have the Batman. I think this is based off Batman and the Bold. I sadly did not play this one. But this is also followed up by Batman 2 for Lego. Um, I didn't like it as much as the first one, but I still very much enjoyed it. Batman Blackgate. Uh, it's the weakest amongst the Arkham games. Um, I think it's just okay. It's not something I think people should go out of the way to try to play, but it's it just didn't. And this is also followed up by the third Batman Lego game. I'll just pop it right in between, right there, and enjoy. Next, this is the Batman one of two uh, Tall Tale games. I unfortunately did not play this one, but I, I'm not really a big fan of Tall Tale games in general, so I'll just put them both in here. Uh, next is Batman VR, or Batman Arkham VR. Did not play. Not a fan of VR gaming too much, unless it's a few key titles, but yeah. Next, ooh, why, why is this one so late in the list? Batman Returns for Super NES. This was a beat-em-up, and a decent one. Um, they, I do recall they did release a Batman Returns on the Sega CD, um... But I, 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 you know what? I, I do think this was a solid beat em up. I'm gonna put it. Ooh, this is tough. You know what? I, I, I do remember enjoying this. But, but you know what? I'm gonna put it right there. I, I don't remember beating it, but I do remember playing it when I was much younger when my cousin would bring over his PlayStation. Or not his PlayStation, his uh, Super NES. Next, a uh, major improvement, and that is Batman Begins. This is when Batman games were really starting to get good, and I absolutely did manage to play Batman Begins. It was a fantastic Batman game. It kind of gave us a little preview of what would follow with the Arkham games. Um, but uh, yeah, especially when you, when you think of um, video games based off of movies, not many of them are actually really, really good, but this is one of the rare examples where it actually was good. Uh, almost as, maybe not as good as the movie, but I think it did a very good job at retelling the story and events that played over the course of the film. Um, so yeah, I, I think it really worked. 
Now this is where things get interesting. Arkham City, the Dark Knight would approve. It is many people's favorite Arkham game of all time, and I perfectly understand why. So, um, its story near the last third is really what at least kind of hurts it for me. That's it's its last third. That's the only thing that kind of holds it down and puts it underneath what, what is my personal favorite Arkham game of all time. But the, still, this is fantastic Batman game, almost a perfect game. Next, we have Arkham Origins. I enjoyed it, but it's, in my opinion, well, the weakest in the primary series of Arkham games outside of Blackgate. Um, it's good. Story's a little bit misleading, but I think it works. Next, we have Batman Arkham Asylum. This is in my 10 out of 10 club. This is my favorite Batman game of all time. This is really what started. And a lot of games, a lot of comic book video games, took a lot of inspiration off this game. This really re... Like, it, it reinvented the comic book video game genre. Like, uh, like, so many games took inspiration from this game. And it still holds it to this day. So, yeah, Dark Knight would absolutely improve it. Next, we have Arkham Knight. A lot of people were disappointed with Arkham Knight, but I really did enjoy it. Did it quite stick the landing as well as I had hoped? Probably not, but I still think that it was it was still a fantastic Batman game. And last, we have the most recent Batman game in the form of Gotham Knight. Ooh, this was rough, but it's not as so bad I would send it to Arkham, but it could have been better. I could not finish this game. It had so many problems. Uh, Story-wise, it wasn't working. Combat-wise, it wasn't working. Exploration, progression, nothing about this game really worked too well. And it and the structure itself did not work. Um, I appreciate how it gave you options in terms of how to which characters to play, but I think that by letting you pick the characters, it never gave you an incentive to play as the other characters. I really think that they should have done something where there were certain sections of the story that you had to play as other members of the Bat family. Otherwise, if you didn't have that, you could just stick with one character. During the course of my playthrough, I only played as Red, Red Hood. And I had no incentive to play as Nightwing or play as Robin or play as Batgirl. They didn't give you a reason. And I didn't even think playing this in co-op was a fun idea either. And even getting around the city was not nearly as fun as playing in the Arkham games. It was really a bit of a hassle and kind of frustrating at points. And so it felt like it was a team that was trying to keep up the reputation of the Arkham games, but just did not work in the sense. And because of that, it was very, very disappointing. I didn't really like it. I couldn't finish it. And I know a lot of people felt the same way. So that is my tier list ranking of all of the, or probably the majority of Batman games that have come out. I'm very curious, if you've played the majority of these, I would like to know how would you rank them or what are some of your favorite Batman games of all time? Let me know in the comments down below. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome and I will see you next time.